check it out. I'm standing out in the hot and dusty Mojave Desert, and if you can believe it, people are growing grapes out here. Of course, there's nothing really that unusual about agriculture out in the Mojave, especially in an area like the Pahrump Valley. In fact, the name Pahrump comes from the southern Paiute name Pahrimpi, or water rock, and because of all the artesian wells that could once be found out here. As far as these grapes go, well, they're being grown for the purpose of making Chardonnay, Cabernet, Merlot, and various blends here at the Sanders Family Winery. In fact, the Sanders can be credited with establishing the very first modern winery in Pahrump and have been growing grapes and producing award-winning wines since 1988. Now for the moment I've been waiting for. Cheers. 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 <laughs> So my winemaker here is Jack Sanders, and Jack opened the very first winery in the state of Nevada back in 1988. He did sell that winery in 2005, just because he got an offer, he said no man in their right mind could ever refuse. <laughs> so at that time, this man did not want to retire. He just turned 85 last month, and does circles around me still, daily. <laughs> so <laughs> this winery right here was built in 2009. So we can thank Jack for corrupt being wine country right here. Your husband called and said you can buy anything you want. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> well, how are you drinking? No, they haven't come in yet. I think it's called a ginger red, not to be confused with redheads, but um, oh, I'm sorry, a red ginger. Like, there's a difference. It's got stuff in it. I think it's got soda, ginger ale, I think, right? And ginger some ale? What does it have in its stuff? It has, it has either, you can have a choice of the Cab or the Merlot with ginger ale and a squeeze of lime. And then sometimes you're gonna add a little bit of sparkling water if you want. See how that is? I got kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> and how is it? It's actually really refreshing. It's delicious. Oh, and, and ice. And ice. <laughs> and ice. No, I don't so that was a tasty way to start the day. If you're ever out in the Vegas area and looking to do something a little different, I would highly encourage you to take a drive out to Pahrump and sample some of the fine wines that you can find here at the Sanders Family Winery. So, I gotta tell you, the original plan was to hop onto dirt and do some wheeling from here, but there is a place in town that I just found out about and I've been dying to check out ever since. All right, I think this is it. Here we are. The Desert Cane Distillery. They put the rum in Pahrump. <laughs> I want one of those. We have about a quarter acre of sugar cane we grow here. Oh, wow. That's the picture of our property in the back, and we have a row that we just planted. And that's here in Pahrump? It's here in Pahrump. Wow, that's amazing. This one right here? Yes. Come on back, and I'll show you how we make it. Oh, awesome. Now, this is a Jamaican-style rum. So since it's a Jamaican style rum for the flavor you want, it has to be open to fermentation. Oh, wow. All this is is sugarcane juice and yeast. You can see this one, you can even take a picture of this over here because it's really moving. 
and that's just the yeast eating the sugar. It's not plugged into any heat, it's just the yeast eating the sugar. Wow. Then it gets really active. And then after all the sugar's almost uh, gone, it'll get into this stage, where you can see just a tiny, tiny bit of movement. And then this one's ready, because there's no movement, it's a dark caramel color. And uh, we have a little um, pump back there, we put the hose on here, we pump it back to this room right over here. Now this is a 50 gallon oh. still, and those are 50 gallon fermentation tanks, but you only get about seven gallons of product when it's all said and done. bourbon kind of guy but um i've been thirsting for a taste of this stuff ever since i heard about this place so here goes you can it's rum it's a pilot streak so you can do whatever you want but a lot of people start with the crystal because that's before any flavor that's actually the flavor of the rum okay okay crystal crystal yep and here's some clean palette in between the uh the taste if you guys need water okay. or soda to mix with it i can't drink it straight Mm. I have to have it mixed That's with good. something. It's too strong for me. That um, spice drum, I'll make my bread pudding with that and I'll plump my raisins with the Man, who knew? I, I really like this stuff. Sauce, uh, which one did you try? I just tried the cocoa lime, which kind of reminds me of like Thai food. But before that, I tried what's called them apples. And that one, it's got a really nice spice to it. It's really good. The coffee one was really incredible. All right, so we just left the Desert Cane Distillery, but before we continue on our trip out onto dirt, we were recommended one other place to have some lunch, and that would be a brand new winery in town called Artisan. Apparently they have really great food, paninis, uh, pizzas. So we're gonna go check that out now. so cool that they're actually putting out all these wineries out here in Pahrump. It's like Southern Nevada's wine country. Small, but very cool. This is turning into one big liquor fest. Our plan was hit dirt and do some wheeling, but we'll get there. There's plenty of daylight. Yes. <laughs> That's right. It doesn't get dark till 8 o'clock, right? Right. <laughs> So this is our Riesling, which we ferment all the way down to dry. So it is not your typical sweet Riesling. It's very rich in flavor, just like it is in color. Artisan sellers, here we go. That's actually surprisingly good. Grapes are grown here in Nevada. It has a nice dry, sweet taste to it. Very refreshing, especially on a hot day like today here in Southern Nevada. <laughs> so there's a reason why we didn't actually know about this place sooner. It's only been open for about like a year at most. But uh, maybe it's just because of location, location, location. But this place is packed. They have great wines. They have... Nevada born wines, and it's a, a definite recommended place to stop. Cheers. All right, now that was a lot of fun, but like the whole day is going so far, we were recommended one other place that we need to check out, and it's a mead place. Do you know what mead is? I'm not even 100% sure, I'm embarrassed to say, but we're gonna check that out next. You guys ready? Stonewise mead and cider. I know mead has something to do with honey, but maybe it's some kind of a brew. At least that's what's explained to me. I apologize for being ignorant in the matter, but um, 
Since uh, liquor is the theme of the day, we're gonna check this place out next. So it is alcohol. So most people know what cider is. It's when we, primary fermentable comes from apple. Um, mead, the primary fermentable comes from honey. Um, but as you can see, our recipes, they're quite uh, varied. Mm -hmm. So we have fun. Um, we are a small batch. We have over a hundred recipes so far. Uh, this is just what we have on tap uh, today. Is this your place? This is our place, yeah. Oh, Chris fantastic. does the fermentation. I am the taster, so. <laughs> what a great a, job. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the way this works, they're all numbered one through four through three through 11. It's supposed to be sweet to dry. We're gonna give this a try now. So number one is Battleborn. Mm. It smells very honey-like. Wow, that's pretty good. Did you try it? Yeah, we just good. Has more of a bite. So this was actually excellent. Thank you so much, you two. We really appreciate it. Chris, it's very fun. Nice nice Who knew today would be as fun as it has been? But um I think now we finally need to make our way out onto some dirt. So it's a quarter to six. A little later than we thought we'd get out on the trail, but we were having way too much fun, unexpected fun and prompt, but it is time to do a little bit of wheeling. Fortunately, there are tons of great trails that extend from the edge of town, and this particular one will take us all the way up to almost 8,000 feet above sea level. I guess it's a good thing that we still have plenty of daylight left up in the sky. So the piles of rocks that you see beyond this fence, they were a grouping of three separate kilns built back in the 1800s, and they were made for the purpose of making charcoal for the purpose of smelting at nearby mines. Kilns like this would have looked like massive beehives standing about 20 feet high and for a time could be found all throughout Nevada. I feel really lucky that I had a dad who introduced me and exposed me to the love of exploring at a really early age. It was because of him that I got to see and experience places just like this and well before they got shot up, burned down, and or destroyed. And I gotta say that it troubles me dearly that so much of the destruction that you see here today has all occurred within the last 10 years. And that the only way that it can be protected is to cage it up in this way.
clearly, this is far from being the hardest trail in the world, but it's still rough enough and bumpy enough that I'm glad to be doing it in a Jeep. Back in the late 1800s, this route was created to cross over the Spring Mountains and connect the towns of Pahrump and Indian Springs. Today, it serves as a great way to get out on some dirt, enjoy the fresh mountain air, take in some amazing views, and of course, beat the heat of summer. Holy cow, it's cold up here! The views are amazing. myself had a hell of a great day today just wandering around going from uh, wine to rum to mead to no whiskey cheers, cheers. 